guys, it's Ariel. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. I'm sorry, it's been a hot minute. Um, I took a little break, but I am hoping to be back with three videos a week again. So if you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. So recently, I'm getting a lot of questions from you guys about what it's like to study abroad in France. I know that Right now, you know, you're wrapping up your university applications, or you might even be accepting your admittance into a post-grad program here in France. So I wanted to use this video to talk a little bit about my experience having moved to France from North America as an Anglophone to study in not my mother tongue. <laughs> Overall, I've studied at three separate universities in France. I did two semesters of my undergrad abroad at a private university and then at a public university, and then I did my full two-year master's program at a university in France. Now, the first two semesters that I did abroad, I really did come as like an international student where half of my classes were with French students and learning like French classes, but then the other half of my classes were with the international students where we focused on more of like French culture and maybe improving our French language skills. My master's degree, on the other hand, was a full French program. I was the only Anglophone in the program. I was with French students the whole time, um, and I was pretty much held to the same standard as those French students. So without further ado, let's get into talking about my experience. I've seen a lot of comments with different questions about my experience studying abroad, so I sort of want to go through them categorically and talk more specifically about my experience. So the first thing I want to delve into is studying in my second language. A lot of you guys have asked how I found doing a full degree in a language that is not my mother tongue. Now when I was doing my two specials abroad as like an international student, I didn't have any issues because all of the profs sort of knew that we were international students, and I guess they held us to like a much, much lower standard than the French students. Pretty much as long as we showed up to class, we all passed. There are people who like really could not speak or read or write in French and they all passed. So there was this sort of like mutual understanding and like empathy from the French teachers who were like, ah, oh, you're trying. So when I came abroad as an international student, there's never any issue, um, you know, studying in my second language because the profs were super understanding. The master's degree on the other hand was a totally different story. Um, if you think about it, you know, you're going to a French school, you're doing a French program, and at the end of it, you're going to graduate with a French diploma. So when I was doing my master's, I was held to a much higher standard um, very much on the same level as French students. There was no issues with like understanding profs or understanding the students. Like the lectures were pretty easy to follow. The only issue for me was listening to the French lecture, understanding the French lecture, but then writing notes down at the same time. And for me, that was absolutely impossible. I just couldn't listen, comprehend, and then write in French at the pace that the French teacher was speaking. So what I ended up having to do was recording the audio of every single lecture and then transcribing it after class to sort of fill in the blanks of my notes. This honestly took so much time, but it was absolutely necessary because even though I could understand the profs and I understood what they were saying and stuff, I feel like remembering things in your second language is so much harder. So I couldn't just remember all of these masses of information that I had learned. I really did rely on my notes to study. So it was super important for me to be able to go back to really clean, precise notes in order to do well on the exams. Speaking of exams and evaluations, um, in terms of being evaluated in my second language, that's also something really important to talk about because I was held to pretty much the same standard as my French colleagues, whether it was an oral presentation or a written essay or an exam. I really just show that I had a high level of communication in the French language. So of course, you know, you are not a Francophone. You, you can't be at that same level, but I was really expected to perform to the best of my abilities at a master's degree level in French. This was really easy overall. Oral presentations, you know, you can rehearse them in advance, you can write them in advance, you can put in that work to memorize and make sure that you are on point day of. And the same thing goes for essays and for dossiers. You can take that time to reread your essay a million times and correct all the grammar mistakes um, before you hand it in. So those weren't an issue. The hardest thing for me, I think, was writing exams because not only did you have to write those exams at like the same speed as the French students, but you also had to have almost a perfect level of written French on those essays which you're writing so fast in a two hour exam period so that was super challenging but I do think in those cases that the profs were um, a little bit empathetic to the situation and more understanding and um, you know allowed some grammar mistakes that I would have made. 
What was really cool actually was for exams, they let me take my own French dictionary in, which meant that if ever I didn't understand something on the exam or I had to refer to the definition of something, I could easily do that in the dictionary. So that was awesome. Ooh, also in terms of my final thesis, interesting enough, I was actually allowed to write that in English. This was so, so important to me and I really argued my case on this one because I mean, my, my biggest issue with this one is that when you're writing such an important academic text, in order for your thought process to truly shine through and your academic abilities to shine through, I do think it's important to write that in your mother tongue. I also think English is more widely spoken in academia and um, also if I was thinking of doing a PhD after, I think it was really essential for me to have written my master's thesis in English. So my prof did allow me to hand in my final thesis in English, which was really, really great. I was really able, honestly, to hand in the best piece of academic work of my life. So I was really thankful. That will be something, of course, up to university, up to your prof. Um, but just know that for me, it was a possibility. The second thing I want to talk about is the workload and whether or not it was hard. Across the board, no. No, it was not hard and the workload was very light, if I'm being honest. Keep in mind that I'm coming from the perspective of having studied at a private, a public, and another public school, so I really have been around the block, so I can tell you with certainty that it was far less challenging than doing my undergrad um, in Canada. I, I think the first thing that shocked me about the workload actually was the fact that none of the profs gave us a reading list. I don't know how it is for you guys in your countries or your cities, but for me when I was studying in Canada and I was doing my undergrad, Every single class and every single prof had a set of textbooks that you had to read for not only the class participation, but also that would be evaluated on the exam. Some of my classes had up to seven textbooks. It was insane. Like I could be reading upwards of 20 textbooks a semester. Like the readings were a huge part of both understanding the class, but also in being evaluated. But in France, across the three schools that I went to, I never once received a reading list. I think total between the three schools, I had maybe one mandatory reading, and that's including my master's, like maybe one mandatory reading. So that was, that was a huge amount of workload that was really alleviated because all you had to do was go to class, listen, and hand in a couple assignments. So that was way different. Another thing too is that the volume of assignments was far, 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 far less. In Canada when I was doing my undergrad, I was handing in about maybe one or two essays a week. There was always midterms, which is like a mid-exam between the semester. There was always a final assignment to hand in and then there was always a final exam or most of the time there was a final exam. In France, on the other hand, it's a totally flipped situation. You have very few assignments and you're banking the majority of your grade on your final exam, which can be great because you have a lighter workload, but it's also challenging because you don't know how certain profs mark and so you end up going to the exam being like, am I gonna pass? Why am I so stressed? Yeah, in terms of assignments, it was way, way lighter. Another thing too is that the vast majority of my assignments, whether it was an oral presentation whether it was a dossier, which is like a large essay, most of them are done in groups. So it's like seriously reduced. I think most of our dossiers, we were expected to hand in maybe like 20 to 30 pages and they would be in groups of like four or five. So normally I'd find myself writing like five pages out of this full dossier that was worth like half of my grade. It, it was just like, it was just so different for me to um, just not have to hand in so many assignments. Third, let's talk classes. One thing that really shocked me about doing my master's in France and even my undergrad is that you don't get to choose your classes. Like not only do you not get to choose like electives, but for the most part, you don't really get to choose your schedule either. When I was studying in Canada, it was like really clear. You know, you would log in on the summer, you would pick your electives, you'd find electives that went with your program, you'd have classes that you had to pick for your program, and then you had several different time slots and different professors to choose from. Um, it really allowed you to mold your schedule in a way that gave you the opportunity to both pick your professor, pick your class, and then pick your time slot. So it felt like a very mature and adult way of going to school, whereas in France, they literally hand you your schedule. They hand you your classes and they hand you where you'll be and when. And the thing is too, the schedules aren't consistent. So it's not like every Monday you have this class and this class. Every single week is a different story. Some weeks you'll have back-to-back -back classes all week and then other weeks you'll have one class. It's really like so random. So you just don't have that chance to pick and then you don't have that consistency after anyways. Also, all of your classes aren't all like weighted the same and like you don't have the same amount of hours for every class. Some classes you have full time, some classes are half time, some classes start here and end 
two weeks later and other classes start three weeks into the semester and end you know, five weeks later, just not all classes are worth the same. You can randomly look at your schedule like in the middle of the semester and be like, oh, we're starting a new class today. Fourth, let's talk exams. Now, this is the only thing that I will say is way harder in France than anything I've ever had to do in Canada. I truly feel like in France there is no respect for, you know, student mental health or well-being when it comes to exams and I don't want to be negative or overly critical of the situation but my exam period in France is really a time when I was at the lowest of the low. I was constantly calling my mom crying. Um, it was high stress, high intensity, and quite frankly it was awful. What made it so hard is there weren't the same rules and regulations as I had back home at my university in Canada. At my university, we had special rules like a certain amount of exams that you could have in 24 hours, a certain amount of exams that you could have in 48 hours, whereas France, everything was just smashed together and you were just like, go, 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 constantly exams, no break. Like within 48 hours, you could write between like four and five exams. It could be back to back to back to back to back to back to back exams, like no break. And on the bright side, I guess you finish your exams early, whereas at my old university, you know, your exam period was like two or three weeks, so you could have exams spaced out throughout that period. What was so challenging about doing my exams in France is that you had to study for all of your exams at the same time. It, you have to think in your head like, okay, tomorrow morning I have this, I have one hour to eat lunch, in the evening I have this, I get to go home, in the morning I have this one, and then this one, and then lunch, and then I have another exam. Like, you don't have time to study for one class, do the exam, study for a second class, do the exam. You have to study for everything at the same time. And not only is it hard on you to study and to remember things specifically for each class, but it's also hard, quite frankly, on your hand. By the end of my fourth exam in 48 hours, I literally couldn't move my hand anymore. Like, I just don't understand how you can be expected to continue writing essays for like eight hours in a day and redo that same thing tomorrow. So um, exams were awful, they were horrendous, they were so hard. Um, that was a battle for sure. Another thing too to note about the exams, um, keep in mind that I've done, you know, multiple semesters at multiple schools for universities. None, none of my exams were multiple choice. The vast majority were long answer questions where you'd be given like maybe one or two questions and you'd have to write an essay. Another thing too about what types of questions you'll get on the exams, throughout my whole master's degree, all of the questions were pretty much the same. The profs would ask like a vague question about something to do with what we saw in the class and you would have to think of every single thing in the class that we saw that could be applied to that exam question. So I really felt like they expected you to write everything that was relevant that we had learned throughout the entire semester. You really had to have like a holistic vision of the whole semester for every class. Uh, it was like... It was definitely intense. It was super, super intense. It's crazy because like throughout the semester, your workload is so light. You're like, oh, like nothing's hard, no, no, no. And then you get to the exams and you're like, I'm gonna get crushed. Fifth, let's talk about grades. I feel like this is pretty much common knowledge at this point, but in France, they don't give you like a percentage from one to 100. Everything's done on a scale of one to 20. And out of one to 20, you can't really think much about the percentage. Like you can't be like, okay, I got a 16. So 16 divided by 20 is 78 and so I got a 78 on the assignment. It doesn't work like that at all. It's not at all about percentages It's literally about these numbers from 1 to 20 and I say that because some numbers aren't attainable for some profs I had this one prof who used to say like you'll never get higher than 18 ever in my class ever 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 Because 19 is for me and 20 is for God and I'm just like Okay, so you really have to go easy on yourself when you're getting your grades back. If we were to translate, I would say like an 80 to a 90% in North America would be the same as between 13 and 15 in France. And so it can be shocking if you are like a straight A student and then all of a sudden you're like 12. What is this? Like, what? To give you guys an idea of how I did in school, I ended up with an overall average of 15 and I got an 18 on my final master's thesis. And in Canada, I had about a 90% average. So yeah, if you do get those 12s, don't cry. We're nearing the end of the list, but six, let's talk program size. This was a really positive point, I think, about my master's program. Um, when I was doing my undergrad degree, some of my classes had hundreds and hundreds, like up to 700 students in a class, and even my smaller classes had between 50 and 100 kids in them. So it was tough to sort of feel connected to the other students, and it was also sometimes tough to feel connected to the prof. But for my master's degree, there was only 13 kids in our class and we sometimes joined a second master's program 
where there was also 13 kids and so sometimes it would be 26 kids with two profs in a class. It was so small, like it was very small and intimate learning which meant that you really built relationships with the other kids in the class but that you also worked a lot more with the prof than I did when I was doing my um, undergrad in North America. So yeah, I think that was a really cool positive point and something that I actually really enjoyed about doing my masters in France. Seventh vibes. Um, one thing that I think really shocked me about my master's program were the vibes, so to speak. Remember how I was saying for the classes you don't get to choose anything, you are all given a schedule and you like have no say in the matter? Well the thing is, because you can't pick your classes, you are given the same schedule as the other kids in your program. So you really just end up like living through your degree together, which means you'll go to class together, then you'll have lunch together, you'll go back to class together, then you'll spend your evening together. Like everything was very much done together as a full program. I thought that was really interesting because in Canada, I was like so used to this whole thing of like head down, walk to class, sit through class, go home, eat at home, go back for your evening class, leave your evening class and never really get to know the kids around me, whereas in France you are living, eating, breathing with the kids in your program. What's really cool too is that I want to say all universities in France, but I could be wrong, but most universities in France have like a publicly funded cafeteria, which means you have access to like these full meals of like entreplat, dessert, which are pretty good and they're very affordable, which means it's just natural for you to like finish class with your fellow students and go eat lunch together at the cafeteria, so that was really nice. Also, when we talk about vibes, the teachers also make sure that there's a smoke break for their students in the middle of longer, like, two or three hour classes. Because it was sort of this moment that we could all just deep breath, have a little chit chat outside, go to the coffee machines, have a smoke if you wanted to, and sort of stand around and talk with one another. So, um, yeah, it all led to good vibes. <laughs> That is it. I think I've had all the points and comments and questions that I've seen. Overall, I have to say it was a really positive experience. It was definitely a very different experience from going to school and studying in, in Canada. I think it was a much less intense experience, a much more fun experience, um, and a much more intimate experience where I really got to know my classmates and profs in a closer way than I did back in North America. That being said, it was super chill, it was easy at times, so yeah, a very different experience from what I had in Canada, but enriching and fun nonetheless. Anyways, that is all I have for you guys today. If you have any other questions about my experience studying abroad in France, please leave them in the comments below. I will read them and maybe make another video about it, and if you did like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next video.